Images from mirrors. Two types of image. For you to see, say, a penguin, your eye must intercept some of the light rays spreading from the penguin and then redirect them onto the retina at the rear of the eye. Your visible system, starting with the retina and ending with the visual cortex at the rear of your brain, automatically and subconsciously process the information provided by the light. That system identifies edges, orientations, textures, shapes, and colors, and then rapidly bring to your consciousness an image of the penguin, a reproduction derived from light. You perceive and recognize the penguin as being in the direction from which the light rays came and at the proper distance. Your visual system goes through this processing and recognizing even if the light rays do not come directly from a penguin, but instead reflect towards you from the mirror or reflect so the lenses in a pair of binoculars. However, you now see the penguin in the direction from which the light rays came after they reflected or refracted. And the distance you perceive may be quite different from the penguin's true distance. A virtual image truly exists only within the brain, but nevertheless is said to exist at perceived location. A real image differs in that it can be formed on the surface such as a car or a movie screen. You can see a real image, otherwise movie theaters will be empty. But existence of the image does not depend on your seeing it and is present even if you are not. Here is an interesting triangle. We can swing a pendulum through the triangle. Here's how it works. We'll use this expandable iris to show how a small hole can be used to form an image of an object. If we place the iris between the bulb and the screen, light passing through the hole in the iris forms an image of the filament on the screen. If we move the lamp farther away from the pinhole, the image becomes smaller. This animation shows how the light from different parts of the filament reaches the screen and forms an image. When the iris is widened, the brightness of the image increases, but the shape of the image becomes indistinct. A point source of light, O, called the object, is a perpendicular distance, P, in front of the plane mirror. Light rays reach the mirror from O, reflect from mirror. If your eye intercepts some of the reflected ray, you perceive a point source of light, I, to be behind the mirror. At perpendicular distance i. This is what you can see. Look at this one behind the mirror. The perceived source i is a virtual image of object O. Only rays that are fairly close together can enter the eye after reflection at the mirror. Plain mirror. This is object P. This is image i. We write I equal to minus P. 
The magnitude are the same, but with minus sign. This minus sign means it's a virtual image. It's on the virtual side. Light does not actually pass through it. Extended object. Now, this object is a lens. Uh, the similar P, I equal to minus P. Okay. When two mirrors are placed opposite one another, multiple reflections result. An object placed between the mirrors produces many images, identical in orientation, but decreasing in size with each reflection. Tilting one of the mirrors skews the reflections off to the side. This sheet of glass acts a bit like a mirror, reflecting an image of a candle placed in front of it. If we put a glass of water behind the glass sheet so that it seems to be in the same position as the candle's image, the candle seems to be burning underwater. If we rotate the board on which the object sits so that we look at the image from a different angle, the candle's image stays in the glass of water at any viewing angle. Spherical mirrors. A spherical mirror is simply a mirror in the shape of a small section of the surface of a sphere. This is okay. This is the center of the sphere. This is another mirror. This is a convex mirror. This is a concave mirror. A plane mirror is in effect a spherical mirror with an infinitely large radius of curvature. This R is infinite, okay? Focal point of a spherical mirrors. Any infinitively distant object O will form an image at point F. Because the image is far away, so that when they reach the, the mirror, O lies a parallel, and they will concentrate Pass through this point O, oh, called focal point or focus of the mirror. And its distance from the center of the mirror, this is the center of a mirror, this point of distance, distance is called focal length F of the mirror. This is a convex mirror. It's a parallel line, it reflects. They never intersect on the left, but they can virtually intersect on the right, and this we call virtual focus. And this distance is called virtual focal length. Anyway, anything on the virtual side is negative number. Anything on the real side is a positive number. To distinguish the actual focal point of a concave mirror from the perceived focal point of a convex mirror, is a different. The former is say to real focal point. This is real on real side. Okay. And this F is positive. Okay. And the latter is say to be a virtual focal point. This is a virtual focal point. Okay. Moreover, the focal length F of a concave mirror is taken to be a positive number. Okay. And that of the convex mirror we call it negative number. This F here is larger than zero. This R is larger than zero. They are all in rear section. And for this one, F is minus number, R is minus number, because these two points are all in virtual side. For mirrors at both times, the focal length F is related to the radius of the curvature R of the mirror by F you could have R. This is spherical mirrors. We will prove it later. Well, consistent with the signs for the focus lens, R is a positive quantity for concave mirror and 
R is a negative quantity for convex mirror. One of these shaving mirrors produces an enlarged image of a person's face because of the way the curved surface of the mirror reflects light. We'll use this thread screen to show just how a curved mirror reflects light. This mirror has a concave surface with a 30 centimeter focal length. Here is a second concave mirror with a 15 centimeter focal length. This mirror has a convex surface with a 30 centimeter focal length. Here is a second convex mirror with a 15 centimeter focal length. We will now illustrate spherical aberration in a concave mirror. A bright point source of light is collimated by an array of slits and the resulting diverging rays focused into a beam of parallel rays. The parallel rays are focused by a circular mirror. Notice that the focus exhibits spherical aberration. Rays further from the optic axis focus closer to the mirror, indicating that the outer part of the mirror is curved too much. This effect can be seen more clearly by giving a different color to each set of rays at a different distance from the axis. Now the mirror is rotated to insert a parabolic mirror with the same focal length. The spherical aberrations disappear. The difference in shape between the circular and the parabolic mirrors allows even outside rays to be sharply focused. We'll use the large concave mirror inside this overhead projector to show how such a mirror concentrates energy near its focal point. A 500 watt light bulb inside the projector provides the radiant energy which the mirror collects and focuses at a point not far above the projector. A piece of paper inserted into the beam at that point quickly bursts into flame. Notice the concentration of radiant energy at the focus shown by the brightness of the light reflected from the smoke. Heat waves, which are infrared radiation, can be focused. In this demonstration, we will ignite a match by focusing infrared radiation onto the match head using concave reflectors. A match is placed about 50 centimeters from the heater. Radiation from the heater is not sufficient to ignite the match. A concave reflector is now positioned behind the match so that it focuses the radiation from the heater onto the match head. The match ignites in less than 10 seconds. Now the heater is turned around so that it faces away from the match. A second concave reflector, closer to the heat source than the first reflector, gathers heat waves from the source and directs them toward the first reflector. Now the match ignites even more quickly. The first mirror collects radiation from the heater and focuses it onto the match. The second mirror collects much more radiation from the heat source than the first mirror because it is closer to the heat source. This large concave mirror produces a variety of different images at different distances. When the candle is between the focal point and the center of curvature, we see a large real image. Now we'll place the candle at the center of curvature of the mirror. An identical but inverted image of the flame appears at the bottom of the candle. A set of plastic strawberries placed at the same point 
shows a similar effect. Images from spherical mirrors. This is the formula we're going to prove it. And F equal to half R. Okay. Oh, we have different situation. This is in the all are concave mirror. But well, the difference is here the object put between inside the focus lay point. This is a put on the focal lay point. This is put outside focal lay. And we see that if we put inside the focal lens, we get a virtual image. Okay, same orientation. If we put outside the focal lens, we get real image and upside down orientation. Real image form on the size of mirror where the object is. It's called, it's called mirror, real image. And the virtual image form on the opposite side. When P approaches infinity, object is in infinity, this is zero. I equal to F, so they cross on the focus point. Now, we lock this one. Ah, uh, they lock this one. <clears throat> the pre mirror, this is a pre mirror. Okay, I equal to P. Okay. R equal to infinity. This is concave mirror. This image is larger than the real object. Okay. So this is a large, a large image. So it's narrowing view. View is narrowing. Okay. This is image is smaller than the object. It's convex mirror. Okay. The so I is smaller than P. Okay. And then we see this. This mirror is a wider view. You can see a lot of this mirror on streets and in your home. Uh, when the girl want to make up, they use the concave mirror. You can see the narrow view enlarged your figure. A concave spherical mirror we will prove the formula. 1 over P plus 1 over I equals 1 over F. Uh, these are very small. Almost zero angle. This is perpendicular with a narrow optical axis three. That means alpha, beta, gamma, theta are all very small, approach to zero. And this object, so this is a P. This is image, this is I. This is center of the sphere, so this is R. We look this, look at this one. A triangle. This beta equal to alpha plus theta in this triangle and this gamma equal to alpha plus two theta now we we'll play this one we multiply by two on top two beta equal to two alpha plus two theta you have two theta you do the deduction so you get two beta minus gamma equal to two alpha minus alpha alpha two theta minus two theta zero so we get alpha plus gamma equal to beta from this equation. What is alpha? A gamma a beta. This is alpha. This alpha is angle equal to the arc AC divided by its radius P. Approximately. Okay. What is beta? Beta equal to exactly equal to AC over R. And gamma is AC over I. We put these three alpha, beta, gamma in this equation. And cancel out the AC, we get this equation. And we set F equal to half R, we get this equation. The size of the object image or image is measured perpendicular to the mirror's central axis. It's called the object height or image height. The edge represents the height of the object, and edge prime the height of the image. Then the ratio height prime of edge is called the lateral magnification, M, 
produced by the mirror. However, by convention, the lateral magnification always includes a plus sign where the image orientation is that of the objects, their same orientation, and get minus sign when the image orientation is opposite the orientation of the object. So, this one we have studied it. M is defined as minus i over p. Okay, this is a lateral magnification. Okay, and e equal to h prime over h. This is an image. This is an object. Height. Okay. If m is larger than zero, that means it's upright image. M is smaller than low, this is called inverted image. If the magnitude of M larger than 1, this is an enlarged image. And magnitude absolute number of M smaller than 1, this is reduced image. If I larger than 0, this is a real image. If I is smaller than 0, this is a virtual image. And we see that I is larger than 0, M is smaller 1. That means M is inverted. The real image is always inverted. If I is virtual image, this smaller one, minus M is positive, is always upright image. Okay. For R, S, I, and P, the sign is positive and negative de depends where side it is located. If it is located on the real side, it's positive number. If it is located on virtual side, it's negative number. We can locate the image not only by calculation, also by drawing rays. We have four rays to, to make it. A ray that is initially parallel to the central axis reflects so the focal point F. Now, if it's originally parallel to the central axis, then it reflects it could pass the focal point F as lower. Vice versa. A ray that reflects from the mirror after passing so the focal point emerges parallel to the center axis. Now, this line is it passed the focal point first, then it hit reflect, and this one should parallel to the axis. Now, this is a convex mirror. This is a concave mirror. Now, you look this one parallel to the axis, it should go this way because the focus point is virtual focus point here. You cannot go in, so you can go up. So this will extend it equal to F. Ah, it's passing through the F. If it is incident, so the F like this one. And after reflect, it parallel to the axis. Ray 3. A ray that reflects from the mirror after passing through the center of curvature. No. Okay. Returns along itself. Go this here, it go back. This is the line. Ray 4. A ray that reflects from the mirror at its intersector C. This is what reflects C. Okay. With the central axis. Is reflected symmetrically above that axis. So this angle equal to this angle, this, this line way. Out of the four rays, we take two rays. The intercept is the image point. Look at this. If you go to center, the lines go to center. It reflects the same way. If you go this center, it's symmetry. Okay. Two out of these four lines, it is set to get the image. Let's summarize. One over P plus one of I equal to one of F. As F equal to F R. From this equation, we get I. 
equal to pf over p minus f. Now, we look at, and this m defined as minus i over p. We look at this middle type, object to location, the image the location, real or virtual type, orientation, and some sign, f, r, m. We look at the plane mirror. The plane mirror, r is infinity. In other words, the f is infinity, okay? And f is infinity, is an infinity, so the p dropped, and they got equal to minus one, i equal to minus one p, okay? And this is minus p, so my m equal to one. That means this is a positive same orientation, okay? This is a location in the virtual side, i is negative. Okay, so the virtual side. Now let's look at concave mirror. Concave mirror, f is larger than zero, p is larger than zero, and then we see have, have difference. This is positive, this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. Now, whether i is positive or negative depends on which one is larger. If p is smaller than f and the object is inside f, and this is a negative number, this is a positive, so i is negative, okay? i is negative means it's, it's in the virtual side, okay? And, and it's same orientation, yeah? it's a virtual picture, okay? Okay, you get this one. Uh, concave is inside f, you get a virtual image, the opposite side of the mirror, and this is orientation is the same. F is positive, okay, R is positive, and M is positive. Now let's see it outside of F. Outside of F means P larger than F. And this is positive, this is positive, I is positive. That means it is in real side. Now this is a real side I. Okay. And this is positive, this is positive, M is a negative number. This is an inverted picture, inverted picture. Okay, so we can see R uh, is larger than zero. Yeah. You get R is larger than zero. Finally, we see convex mirror. Okay, in convex mirror, we get a F, F is smaller. So minus F is positive number. This is smaller, this is positive. So on, on top, uh, numerical, uh, uh, this is a is negative number, okay? This is positive number. So always i is a negative number. So this is i is smaller than zero, and m is positive number. So we get, this is image is virtual, is object at the same orientation, okay? And we see the f is minus, R is minus, but M is positive. Example. A tilatula of height H sit casually before a spherical mirror whose focal length has absolute value F equals 40 centimeter, where absolute number. The image of the tilatula produced by the mirror has the same orientation as the Terramula and has height h prime equals 0 0.20 h is reduced picture, okay? Question A. Is the image real or virtual? And is it on the same size of the mirror as the Terramula or the opposite side? Now we look at this one. M equal to h prime over h equal to is 0.2 or larger than zero. And the definition is minus i over p. It's positive. It's positive means i is negative. So i is negative means that it's on the virtual side, it's on the opposite side, okay? And it is orientation is the same, okay? Is a mirror concave or convex? And what is its local lens F sign included? Now, 
Widow M is a positive number. Okay? And then Widow M is 2.0. What is M? M. I equals minus M. You could minus 2. Oh, I is minus number. Okay? I is minus number. So this 1 over F if 1 over I, 1 over P. We put I inside. Put inside. Okay? And we find this is equal to uh, minus 4 over P. F is negative number. So this is convex mirror.